<laughs> Am I on? Yes, you are. <laughs> I didn't get Moscow. That's something. <laughs> Audra, Hi, Audra. Are you running this meeting or is my what? <laughs> I have no idea. I just followed the the email. Audra, can you oh. hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So Robin will be running the meeting because she's the chair. Okay. Can you hear me? With help from Audra from this new technology, some of you are um, are muted. Are you doing that, Audra, or did they not join with um, with video? Uh, some some have joined with video and some haven't. With audio, like Sandy, you're um, you're not on for a mic. You have control over that in the lower left, whether you want to uh, mute or not. I muted myself. There you go. Okay. I muted myself for a minute too, Robin, but I am on audio. Okay, great. That's fine. Jenna. I just want to make sure everybody knows how to do that. Oh, so, I. You hear me? Huh. We can hear you. Is that John? We can John. hear you. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure this out. You're doing great, John. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. We'll try it, see what happens. Audra, do you know how many Brave we're expecting world. tonight? Uh, we had, we had um, at least 12 confirm, but I, I'm counting now to see if we have a quorum. And I think that but we're- We're at 24, it looks like. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So we've still got a couple of minutes. You're not supposed to be touching your face, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. That's part of the reason I'm not using a camera. I don't want people to see how often I touch my face. So we have 15 members now. So we've got a, we've got a quorum. Okay, great. I have not quite half passed. So I'll give it, I guess it is. That's my watch. The clock says half past. So do you want to get started or do you want to give it a minute? I'm ready. Yeah. What chance are we starting? Hmm? What chapter, what tab are we starting at? 6.30? No. The tab, tab seven. Tab seven, thank you. You might want to go around and just do a quick audio check on everybody and make sure. We do a, we're going to actually go down through the list and do a roll call and make sure who's here and who's not here for members. Um, <coughs> my notes here. Hey, Mark. So, um, we're thank you everybody for trying this out. We're all new and excited. Who wishes they had stock in Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I've said that <laughs> all week. Um, so, we're going to do start. We're going to be doing roll calls for the votes tonight. Oh, There's no way that we can do it virtually. Um, we checked with our attorney, Mark Kelly, and um, because we can't see who is voting what way we um, have to actually do a roll call. So on every motion and every vote, we will go through the list of who's here in the meeting and everybody will have to say whether they're for or against. Um, hopefully everybody, thank you. I'm losing you sometimes, Robin. I don't know if- I'm sorry? I'm having trouble, but- You're having trouble hearing? I, for me, you keep cutting out. Yeah, Audra was doing that a minute ago. Let me. Allison, I think, I think Allison, I think your internet might be weak because your screen is cutting in and out. So is your vocal. So it might be at your place. Allison, I can hear you. Okay. Oh, maybe it's me. I thought. Oh, everyone set up. Yeah. Thanks for patience, and we may have to ask people to repeat things and um, get get our way through trying mm -hmm. it this way. It's our first time to do this, so. Um, 
during during the presentations tonight, the committee is going to be muted so that there isn't a lot of noise from the back. So we're asking that questions be saved for after the presentations from the department heads. So save save those questions for at the end. Um, and this meeting is being recorded and it's being um, shown on YouTube as well for people who are at home. So they're just as if we were in a meeting at the town hall, um, people from home can see this meeting as well. Do they see this screen, Audra? Is that what they see? I don't know. Yes, they see the gallery view screen. So that's everybody's face. So the first thing to start is we'll do a roll call of the board of the um, committee members and see who is here. So John French, I noticed you're here. Lisa Dresser, you're yes. here. Uh, Judy Scheibel, no. Uh, yeah. Richard Householder, here. Yes, yes, there you are. Um, Barbara Oland, Drew Lyman, I see Drew. Yeah, that would be great. No, Drew. Lorna Cummings. I'm here. Here. I'm here. Mark Haskell. Mark. No. Mark Siegenthaler. Um, Sandy Cox, you're here. here. Mark Corsi. Here. Here. Carla Doremus Tranfield. Yes, here. Here. Shannon Herring. Shannon. No. Chrislyn Sidwell. Kristen Sidwell. I'm here. Here. Robert Knapp. No. Mary Winchell. Yes, present. Okay. Wendy Rich. I'm here. Here. Uh, Sophie Romana. I'm here. Here. Jasmine Pike. Courtney Sukforth. Jeff Doan. I'm here. And Tyler Smith saw you here. So I have not here Judy Scheibel, Barbara Oland, Drew Lyman, Mark Haskell, Mark Siegenthaler, Shannon Herring, Robert Knapp, Jasmine Pike, and Courtney Sukforth. I have all of those people not here, correct? But we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen people. So we have a quorum at thirteen. <laughs> so. Good to go. God bless you, whoever that was. Jim Hurt is here. Jim, Hurt, Jim, you're here? Yes. I can't see anybody's lovely face or your mind either. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Why did I not have you on my list? Okay. So we're at 15. Yeah. Anyway, so we're good to go. So the people who are on, um, like, we'll have to figure out as we go, I think, with the questions when we get to the end, so that we're not over speaking each other. If we were all in the video option, you can click on a little hand that shows up and we could be raising our hands um, that way and then called on, but we'll have to see how it goes and be polite and try not to speak over each other when we have the questions. Anything else, Audra, that you have? Um, no, I, I will say that um, I'll mute everybody uh, when one of the department heads or um, presenters is speaking, um, just to make sure that everything everybody can hear everything. And if there's any ambient noise, we're reducing that. So um, if we're ready to start, we have, Susan, is there a question? Okay, if we're ready to start, we have general government, which was tab three. In the Opera House Town Office Building, page eight. Are you doing that one, or Andrew, you're muted? Apologies. Sorry. Uh, you. We, we do this during the beginning as part of the administrative budget, um, but due to scheduling, we're going to do it tonight. Um, so this is a little bit further back in your book or further at, towards the beginning of your book. Um, sorry. Tab three. So it's in tab three.
So tab three, um, page eight is the beginning of it. And so the Opera House town office uh, building tab that has to do, or um, budget has to do specifically with uh, the building itself. So it's both the town office as well as the auditorium and anything, or well, the building part side of the auditorium. So that uh, encompasses the wage of the custodian um, or 50% of the wage of the custodian, as well as, um, you know, supplies for cleaning of the building, electricity, heat. Um, our solar PPA is built into that as well. Um, and all of the services for the building, such as sprinklers, the, the uh, um, maintenance of the elevators and anything building related in regards to the town office or the, the physical opera house itself. And uh, Dave Morrison also manages that as part of his role. So Dave, did you have anything specific about this budget that you wanted to talk about? Hello, everybody. Um, not really. It's, uh, there's very little change. We reduced um, some of the, the, the small department purchases, the 3515, a little bit. The rest is pretty much um, what you would expect. As Audra said, it's cleaning supplies, it's maintenance, um, and, and it's pretty straightforward. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Any questions from anyone? And, and Andrew, just a question for you. I noticed that we're not muted as a group. So are, um, were you unmuted yourself? So are, should we all be muting ourselves while people are speaking? I was, I was just going through and playing with it for that first one. So apologies, I'll mute everybody next time. Okay, all right, just wanted to make sure. So I'm sorry, any questions for Dave on the building? Can I have a question for Audra? Yeah. Yes. John? Where is the expense for the fix in the building? I know we have some major leaks. Is that in all the capital? So that would, that would normally be in the capital. So, um, the capital improvement budget. So, uh, you know, last year when we set aside some funds for, you know, gutter replacement, repointing, um, there was a number of other, I think it was $150,000 worth of repairs that was in the CIP. And this year, I don't believe we're proposing the same extent of repairs because we still have funds that weren't spent from last year that we're planning on spending this summer for a lot of that repair work. So it hasn't been budgeted for in FY21. So they've got the leak under control then on the back side of the building? <clears throat> no, but the, but the work that needs to be done um, to get that leak under control has been budgeted for and we're gonna do the work this summer. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah, Sophie? Hi, um, I have a question on the electricity line. Um, so it's, it's budgeted at 12,000, but comparing with the actual, it's about like a little bit over 4,000 over budgeted. Is this something we do out of caution in case it's a harsh winter or what's the, what's the rationale there? Sorry, yes, for, um, we try to uh, we try to be pretty conservative about how we budget, and we have had some years where, you know, it's been closer to twelve thousand than the eight thousand. So, just you know, just in case, we try to budget at a um, more conservative level. And so, and and what was the impact of solar, of installing solar on the electricity? Well, it's all done through um, a power purchase agreement and um, through, you know, net metering. So you choose specific accounts that are going to be offset through the solar. And I think that all up the, the um, you know, the solar farm that we have offsets about 30% of the overall solar use of the town. That's just a, that's a rough number. Right. Um, but we had a lot of troubles with the net metering agreement because the accounts that were originally chosen to be offset didn't use enough electricity to utilize all the credits. So we had to do something. We, we ended up just doing the thing that we knew or that would um, utilize the entirety of those credits without having to go through and 
totaling up everything and making sure that they would do that, which was um, applying them to the wastewater treatment plant. Thank you. Other questions or a motion? I have a question, it's Carla. Um, for electricity, following up on Sophie, it says in the verbiage that you split it 50-50 between town office and, and uh, opera house, but it's not 50-50 on the budget. Is there a reason for that? Like one is 8,500 and the other one looks like it's 12,000. Sorry, I was just looking. That just must have been an, a note that we needed to update. Which one is right? What's that? Which number is right? You mean the, the 8,500 or the 12,000? Right, yes, which one? We just, I mean, we just didn't update the note to reflect that it wasn't 50-50 anymore. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Robert, can I make a motion? You may. Can I make a motion? We accept the town manager's recommendation of ninety-four thousand seven hundred dollars. Second. Second. Okay. Now we're going to have to go through and get a, a yes or a no from everybody and go down through the list. So, John French. Yes. yes. Lisa Dresser. Yes. Richard Householder. Yes. Um. Verna Cummings? Yes. And I am a yes. Sandy Cox? Yes. Mark Corsi? Yes. Carla Doramus Tranfield? Yes. Kristen Sidwell? Yes. Mary Winchell? Yes. Wendy Rich? Yes. Romana? Yes. Beth Doan? Yes. Tyler Smith? Tyler, I have him down here. Okay, Jim Hurd. Yes. Yes. So Tyler, I have. Did, Tyler must have left the building. So I still have, just to double check and make sure nobody has joined late here. Judy Scheibel, Barbara Olin, Drew Lyman, Mark Haskell, Mark Siegenthaler, Shannon Herring, Robert Knapp, Jasmine Pike, Courtney Sukforth are all not here. Correct. All right. Um, and Tyler is gone. All right, um, so this next one is Opera House Auditorium, page nine, same section. Robin, um, yeah. did you get James, Jim Hurd? Oh, I Jim the white. Yes, I did, I have him down here. Yep. Okay, thanks so much, thanks. Audra, are you ready for the next one? I'm ready. Okay. All right, so the next budget is the Opera House Auditorium. So that's all of the, um, you know, more operational sides of the Opera House itself um, when it comes to running the actual theater. And so for this budget, I'm going to turn it over to Dave Morrison to present. Thank you, Audra. Um, so for this budget, it is also the, the bulk of the change is in the uh, staff salaries and benefits. Um, and uh, Audra or Jody could speak to that better than I. I will say that one number that we boosted was marketing, which was 0107 um, Just because we are doing a lot more marketing and promotion now, and, and we've found it's really important to ticket sales. So we are putting more emphasis on that. So I reduced some other numbers that we hadn't really been spending out to try and lessen the impact of that. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Robin? Yes, John. May I ask a question? May. So David, in the past we've had some issues about booking some of these groups. How is that working out now as far as getting the money and all the rest? It's been working out pretty well. Um, I'll probably tell you something you already know, but there's two halves. Um, there's the rental side, um, which is as it sounds and, and uh, sort of is repeat renters. And then there's the 
producing side, which is opera house producing shows. And what we've been trying to do is really bring the best shows we can and a variety of shows, family shows, different things, knowing that some sell better than others. So um, the ones that don't sell so well, we try to offset with shows that we're confident will sell well. And that way we can bring a, a, a broad variety of good programming and still come out in the black. So I feel like it's been it's been working pretty well. So we don't have the shot falls we had in the past where we were, okay, thank you. We don't. Robin, I have a question. May I ask it? Yes, go ahead, Lorna. Hi, um, I'm wondering if you have any way of knowing I mean, what's going to happen with the COVID-19, how that, if that, if you need sort of a buffer money to, in case a lot of shows get canceled or since we don't know what the future holds with that. That's a great question, Lorna, thanks. Um, I will tell you this, um, we've cleared our calendar, March, April, most of May, just because we don't know. We, we know that clearly we're closed now and the likelihood is April and and then we guess. I've reached out to all the renters in May and said, if you wanna move your shows, now's a great time while there's some spaces. So 11 different shows have been rescheduled and pushed further back in the year. So the result is gonna be our rental numbers are gonna be down in this fiscal year because of a lot of these shows. But I think it's gonna be sort of a wash because our rental numbers are gonna be up in the next fiscal year because we have moved all these over and filled a bunch of empty slots. It's gonna make for a very busy year and it's gonna be a lot of work for staff, but everyone knows that we have to do whatever we can do to take care of all our community partners and, and folks who count on us to put on their dance shows or Downey Singers or whatever it may be. So uh, the, the short version is we're, going to have some shortfalls between now and um, the end of June. We hope to pick it up in the fall. Great, thank you. And Nancy. beyond that, we get a lot of questions from folks saying, when are you gonna open and so forth. And, and we just tell them like everyone else, we take our direction from the governor. And when the restriction is lifted, then we will uh, take it from there. Thank you. Sophie, I think you had a question. Yeah, I do. Uh, Dave, uh, thank you for this presentation. What kind of metrics are we using to measure year over year the attendance? Since you're putting more money into marketing, I'm assuming that you're tracking those numbers. So is it like number of seats or what, what, or number of rentals? What, what are your metrics for uh, basically success with lots of quotes? That's a great question. We have been doing surveys at a lot of shows to try and get a sense of what uh, mediums are the most successful, whether it's posters or newspapers or radio ads or social media or website, so on. Um, and it's been interesting, but it hasn't told us a lot because every show is different and every audience is different. Some shows it's word of mouth, some, some shows they saw it in the free press, so we try and cast kind of a broad net and we try to learn from previous shows which audiences tend to react to different uh, ways of advertising. Thank you. This is Dick Hounsoner, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I see we have a new line item called box, box office that has never been there before and there's no explanation to it. What is Thank it? you for asking that, that's a great question. Um, we, changed our ticket vendor this year. Um, we've always had a third party vendor that allows us to sell tickets over our website. And previously that vendor um, would take a percentage of our sales. And so we would charge a fee to cover that. We've now entered into an agreement with a company that has a completely different model that we're really excited about. And it allows us to offer no fee ticketing, which we think, and the feedback has borne this out, is something that's very attractive to people. A lot of frustration was people who um, would ring up their tickets and, and, and 
be unhappy with the fee or not understand the fee. So now we are absorbing some of that uh, as a cost of doing business, which allows us to have no fee tickets, which seem to help sales. Mm -hmm. So that uh, amount, that is our credit card processing uh, fees and a small bit of our expenses from um, our arrangement with the ticket vendor. Okay, thank you. Yes, Richard, did you have a question? No, okay. Um, any other questions? No? This is, this is Tyler Smith, just a general comment on that box office thing. You know, I think it's, um, Dave, I would say that a lot of people are getting used to paying an additional fee for something like that. So I would, uh, I realize you may get feedback from some people, but you know, I could see that changing back in the future. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, can I ask who that was speaking? All I can see sorry, is the phone number. This was, uh, this was uh, Tyler Smith. Tyler, okay, sorry, thanks Tyler. Sorry, I'm on here twice, I think. <laughs> okay, no, you're just on as a phone number, I think now. So, okay, great, thanks. Yep, I am. All right. Okay, any other questions or comments or a motion? Motion to approve the store manager's recommendation $300,100. I'll second that. Okay, okay, we have to do a roll call again. So, John French. Yes. Yes. Addresser. Yes. Richard Householder. Yes. Lorna Cummings. Yes. And I'm a yes. And Sandy Cox. Sandy. Gone. Uh, Mark Corsi. Yes. Yes. Carla Doremus Tranfield. Yes. Kristen Sidwell. Yes. Mary Winchell. Yes. Wendy Rich. Yes. Sophie Romana. Yes. Beth Doan. Yes. Tyler Smith. Yes. And Jim Hurd. Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, so I, Sandy, did you come back? No. Okay. So that uh, motion carries $300,100. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Like the new glasses there, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Is that it on that, those line items or those pages, Audra? If next up is. Um, Leisure services, tab seven. Yeah. Tab seven, page 25 for the Camden Public Library. So for this, um, I would like to hand it to Nikki Mayonis to present. So um, our board of our um, our board of trustees, two members are here, and Silvio is gonna just start us off and then I'll jump in. Okay, can everybody hear me? Audra, can you hear me? <clears throat> yep. Yeah. All right. I, I guess you all have my name on your screens. I'm I'm uh, <clears throat> Silvio Calabi, president of the Library Board of Trustees, and my real job is to introduce our executive director, Nikki. Not that she really needs any introduction, but I want to pave the way for her presentation of our our budget. <clears throat> I want to tell you some things that most of you probably know, but it, these are important. And it, just in case anybody does not, so let me remind you of, of a couple of things about the library. And then we have some new things, of course. <clears throat> First, we only get half our annual funding from the town. The rest, you know, it's almost half a million dollars <clears throat> at present. We have to raise ourselves every year. And you know, by the way, this alone makes us budget very, very carefully. So every year we cobble together a patchwork revenue stream that usually manages to fill the bill, but this year is obviously going to be a little bit different. <clears throat> There's a few other things I'd like to remind you of. Um, the library hosts more than 800 programs every year, which are attended by a, more than 26,000 people. Also every year, uh, more than 230,000 visitors come through the front door, at least in normal times. And finally, if you don't know this, the Camden Public Library is rated by library professionals as one of the top 
85 libraries across America. And all of this, I think, is pretty remarkable in a town of just 5,000 citizens. <clears throat> but right now, for obvious reasons, it's all in jeopardy. <clears throat> the library's been closed for more than a week, and of course, we see no end to this in sight. If you want to know, Licky can fill you in on what she and her staff have been doing in the meantime and what services they're still offering. But locking the doors has dried up our outside revenue streams. Donations, for example, on which we rely very heavily have dwindled to nothing. We may not be able to hold our summer harbor arts fairs or our used book sales, which bring in significant money. And we don't really, we don't know at all <clears throat> what sort of relief, if any, might be coming from Washington or Augusta for libraries. So <clears throat> with all this in mind, um, on behalf of the trustees and the library and really the citizens of Camden, we ask that you approve our budget as we proposed it. <clears throat> it's no longer just a matter of sustaining the library, but of ensuring its survival. So thank you for your attention. And now I want to turn this over to Nikki, our executive director. Thank you. So. Um... As you probably know, the public library building and the grounds, and of course I mean by that the amphitheater in Harvard Park, belong to the town of Camden, but are uh, under the authority of the library's board of trustees. We always budget to break even at the end of a fiscal year. Uh, that means we don't budget to make money, and we certainly don't budget to lose money. And that's in normal times, of course. So in normal times, the, um, the, the short version of what our income would look like is that we bring in about $244,000 in donations, about $50,000 from the Harbor Arts shows and meeting room rentals and passing the hat programs. Our used book sales bring in about 32,000. Copies and faxes and library card fees, they bring in about 34,000 endowment and other income such as weddings that brings in 149,000 and then this year we are asking the town of Camden for support at the level of 493,000 as you can see from your uh, paperwork. So again the very short version of our plan is our normal plan is that library trustees and staff and volunteers bring in about $507,000 in income and then with town support, we hope at the $493,000 level, it all works. And that's a 51% library, 49% town split. But again, that's a normal year. A very short version of expenses, computers and tech, we spend 20,000. Because we're not a town department, we outsource our bookkeeping and accounting and HR that costs us 18,000. We are professionally audited or reviewed every year and this year it'll cost us 6,000. We spend 69,000 on books and eBooks. We hope to anyway. Maintenance and cleaning and heating and utilities and other building needs cost us 113,000. Programs and other events, 27,000. Payroll, and again, in normal times, we're open seven days a week. So payroll is at just over 500,000. Benefits for those people that comes in, that's health insurance and so forth, at 118,000. And then last, but certainly not least, is the upkeep of, the, of Harvard Park and the amphitheater. And we budget uh, just over 57,000. So that's just a very quick look at how we uh, uh, make our money and how we spend our money. And please note that the budget increases that we have put in this year are almost exclusively devoted to maintaining the historic building and grounds. We have plans to replace some of the windows and doors that have leaky seals. We have plans to finish up the Atlantic Avenue stone wall repair. We've also received a matching grant to repair the original Fonz Garden uh, brick stairway and railing, and again, it's a matching grant, uh, and you should see progress on that later this year. <clears throat> Last spring, we began to notice some water leaking here in my office 
and also in the children's room. And over the spring and summer and fall, uh, we brought in some experts to consult about the problem. We acted on their recommendations. And that's, uh, we did some resealing and caulking, uh, as you know, of the stone wall on Atlantic Avenue and the capstone up top. And then we also installed additional drainage up above my head here on the South Lawn. <laughs> we pay for this work with our emergency facility fund, but the leaks have not stopped. So we may now be facing sooner rather than later replacement of the entire green roof. And that's the roof that covers the 25 year old addition to the building. That project will cost in the neighborhood of a million dollars and will probably need to be a municipal bond project. And of course we will keep you informed. One last word, one last thing I wanna say before I turn it over to you for questions. So our income and our budget, as I've just talked about, is based on what we can produce in normal times. This next year, and certainly these next few months, will not be normal, and I think we all know that. We do have a proven income stream, and we've been successful year after year earning what it is we need to function on our side as the full service library that Camden really demands of us. I don't know what this next year will bring, and I know that you don't either. But one thing I do know is that now more than ever, we need your help. So who has the first question? Uh, Dick Householder, um, recognizing that nobody has a crystal ball about this pandemic, have you uh, highlighted any areas that you would not spend to uh, keep operations going uh, in your budget? Well, you know, honestly, um, we don't have a lot of slack in our budget. And I know people say that, but I really mean that. We don't have a lot of slack in our budget. So if in fact we have to cut, it will be ours and it will be people. And I'm very sorry to say that, but we don't have much of an alternative. That said, there may very well be help coming from Washington um, for us. And, um, you know, we're all finding those details out at the same time. So I certainly have my fingers crossed, but if in fact we have to cancel um, the Harbor Arts Fair this summer, and I think that's quite likely, if we don't have weddings this summer, um, if we don't have sales this summer, it goes on and on. So something is going to have to give on our part. Um, but I am keeping my fingers crossed for help from um, the state in Washington. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No. Yes, yeah, Sophie. Um, Nikki, thank you for, for your presentation. A few questions on the, the staff right now is, is not working or working from home. I, I follow Miss Amy, yes. which I worship. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're, we're paying them still. Yes, we are for, yes, for the moment, yes. Are they part in the, the benefits package of the same package than the town or have you negotiated something different and would there be an advantage to increase, to uh, bringing them together to lower the cost of uh, fringe benefits? We've looked into that when we've looked into it um, uh, in past years, for us, it would actually be more expensive. Okay. I certainly think uh, it might be worth, you know, looking into again, <clears throat> but we have looked into it. Um, and my other question, you have a bond on your budget. Is this, do we know when this uh, is maturing or retiring? A bond? A on, 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 yeah, you have a bond service, I see. You're paying that, right? I think, um, is Audra there? I, I think Audra should know. That, is that the bond for, um, is, is she speaking about the bond for the park? The yeah, $50,000. I believe it was last year. It might have been the year before that. So and that I think what year was that? Was it two thousand five? I think two thousand five. Yes, two thousand five, something like that. Yep. A number of um, improvements were made to the to Harbor Park, and um, there was a bond that I believe retired in twenty eighteen. 
Yeah, 2018. Yeah. And that was a town-wide bond, right? Yes. And my, my last question, if I may, um, there's a capital campaign that's just either been finished or, or keep, keep on going, which has been very successful. Yeah. How does the capital campaign um, uh, is working with your annual budget? Is, is this a potential resource for you in case of an emergency? Or is this something that's set aside as a reserve? Can, can you explain to, to me how it works, please? Certainly. Uh, so that campaign um, was uh, for endowment. And it is for endowment, I should say. And those were the terms under which people gave money. And so, of course, that endowment will continue to help us. And it was, we call it the campaign for the future for good reason, to help us, um, you know, in the future. So um, it is certainly my hope that we, uh, that we respect the wishes of the people who gave that money. And Nikki, last year there was an issue with, was it the heating system, HVAC system? And that was kind of a panic when we were here in budget season. Has that all been dealt with? Um, yes and no. Um, we have been uh, speaking with alternative companies and we are, that, that system uh, at this point um, continues to function, Robin, and that's the good news. Um, we have been looking at alternatives which were much less expensive uh, than the, uh, the $40,000 that we were quoted. And we are following up with another company and we hope to have that work done very soon. So um, it was, uh, we spent quite a lot of time finding companies that actually were even willing to come out and look at the system that we had because it's one of those systems that, um, that, the, uh, that uh, is owned by the, uh, the software itself is owned, is proprietary. But we did find someone eventually to come and look. So that is still in the works, but the, and the system is functioning. And that was in this year's fiscal year, correct? That is in the that was, fiscal year, yeah, okay. that's correct, yes. Any other questions? I, Sophie, I, another question? I, I do, if I may, and it's not necessarily a question relating to the, to the uh, uh, library budget, but we've just heard from the Opera House and from Nikki that, that those institutions may need some help further down the line in the budgeting process. We're scheduled usually for ha having only three meetings to approve the budget. What is the town's process if in June or July, once our committee is done meeting, there is some request for extra funding or to put a bond or to, how, how does it work? And, and if it's not the time to address this question, I apologize, but I would like to have it addressed tonight, please. No, that is a good question. So the, the budget committee's review is really um, the first major public review of the budget and the select board also has their review of it. So after the budget committee provides recommendations, it goes to the select board to, you know, further um, you know, the ask more questions and make other, um, you know, make their recommendation, which ultimately goes to the voters and gets put on the warrant. So we've had, you know, circumstances where, you know, because we're a town and we have a fairly long budget process, you know, things change between, you know, when I, when I prepared the budget with the staff when the budget committee reviewed the budget and then when it gets to the select board that we've had to make some fairly significant changes. Um, so I would suggest that that would be a good time because there's so many unknowns at this stage. Hopefully by the time the select board reviews the budget, there'll be a few more knowns in terms of, you know, funding and things that we might adjust. So that's kind of the, you know, the last opportunity before it goes to the voters. But then ultimately, you know, town meeting is where the budget is approved. It's the citizens that make the final decision. So we've got that last opportunity when, you know, we go to town meeting for um, changes to be made as well. And I, I do think that there's some, some things that you might want to consider as a committee. And that could be, um, you know, we had the discussion about reserve accounts. Yeah. You know, we put, we were pretty, I'd, I'd say, what I've said is pretty conservative in terms of not not a lot in reserve accounts. It was um, much less than last year, but given you know, the fact that we just can't project revenues in the way that we we you know thought we we were going to be able to a few months ago, that's when you know looking at putting additional funding in some reserve accounts might make a lot of sense. 
So that's something as a committee you can certainly consider doing. And we are gonna have another meeting um, next Thursday. And so we can come to you with some suggestions on some of the areas where there's you know, a, a higher level of uncertainty than others where we might wanna think about you know, reserve funds to um, help offset some of that. And, and one last question, if I may, um, is there a coordination between Nikki and Dave and the town to look for grants or relief either at the state or federal level? Is there like a little, are you all working together to identify those potential sources of funding or is Nikki on her own, Dave on his own? How, how is that working? Because uh, I'm thinking it must be a, a maze to look through all the, you know, the relief packages that have been published. So what's the, the process there that has been created? So it's pretty early days, but we're, we're trying to meet regularly. We had a department meeting, was it yesterday? Yeah, and Nikki, I think, yeah. It was, yeah, it was yesterday morning and Nikki joined us. Um, we didn't talk specifically at grants at this stage, except for the FEMA reimbursements, because we do know there's FEMA disaster relief funds that are gonna be available. Um, but I certainly think that, you know, moving forward, it's going to be something that we absolutely want to look at together. And we, you know, we're absolutely going to include Nikki. Um, you know, she's part of the team as well. Thank so you Audrey, so much. I apologize for the segues, but it, it's really um, in interesting and important to me to understand this. Thank you. Thank you. Good questions. Is another question? Yeah. Robin. Uh, Carla? Yeah, so Audrey, you mentioned that the select board is going to be doing the review. When will that be? Is that scheduled? So their review typically play, takes place in April. So, um, you know, after the budget committee finishes their review, the select board is directly after that because they need to get their recommendation um, ready to be printed in the, in the town report uh, and, um, you know, vote, vote to send it um, to town meeting. So they, they typically do an April review because that's when we need to have everything ready for printing. So, you know, we're, we're about a week behind, um, you know, because of everything that's going on, but they're still scheduled to, to kind of proceed with that in roughly the same time frame. So given the uncertainty at this time, would it make sense to consider formally inviting the budget committee to that select board review? in case there are substantial changes? I mean, that's something we could certainly do. Yeah. Just a thought. Are you proposing a motion, Carla? Well, it's a public meeting as well. So, oh, so you, we can all come. Um, why, don't we, why don't we see where we get further down the line here and have that conversation if you want. Well, I think yeah, that'd be great, great if more budget committee members would show up at the select board review. Um, I think that's always encouraged and so just to throw that in there. And and at the town meeting. Oh, oh yes. More people at town meeting. Yeah. Okay. Robin. But yes. I, I really do have to say while we're talking about this, town meeting itself is a huge uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Which would pose a real problem for adopting a budget on time. Good point. John, you have a question? So, more of a statement. Um, I notice Audra is referring to res reserves and stuff, which is something the town has always relied on. But we're in kind of uncharted ter territories going forward. And I think it would make sense, or at least uh, make a statement to the select board that as a budget, if it gets approved by a town meeting, that some of these reserves we held back until we know where we are with this COVID-19 incident, because there could be a lot of folks in this town that might be in pretty bad shape. And it might be the point that we may not do some of these projects rather than help our citizens. So, I mean, it's a very good budget, Audra, and your, your department heads have done a great job. I'm not downplaying, but this is also a very unusual situation where I feel that we need to keep money available, maybe a little bit later in the budget and then do the project later so we're available for people if they need it. That's all. Yeah, Thank you, I, I think one of the points too is that on our on our final meeting is our opportunity as well to review what we've done um, going over this and what we've approved. And there may be a time where at that point somebody wants to make motions for making, you know, we may know more by then, we may not, but we have some chance to make some adjustments on that last one too for things that we've already passed. So 
Okay, do we have a motion or was there another question? Lorna, did you have a, somebody over well, in that corner of my screen had a question. <laughs> I'll make a motion. Okay, John, motion. I'll make a motion with the town managers for $493,000. Second. Seconded. Okay, we have to do a roll call again. John French. Yes. Lisa Dresser. Yes. Lisa Dresser? Yeah. Uh, Richard Householder? Yes. Yes. Uh, Lorna Cummings? Yes. And I'm a yes. Uh, Sandy Cox? Sandy's gone, apparently. Um, Mark Corsi? Yes. Carla Doremus Transfield? Yes. Kristen Sidwell? Yes. Harry Winchell? Yes. Wendy Rich? Yes. Sophie Romano? Yes. Uh, Beth Doan. Yes. Tyler Smith. Tyler, are you there? No. Jim Hurd. 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 Jim Only one is necessary. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Good for Jim. All right. Did I miss anybody? All right. Oh, um, Robin, I, I did see that, like, if you look over in participants, it does say that Mark Haskell is on here. It looks like he has his hand raised. Um, it also looks like he's muted. Mark, are you there and have a question? Maybe you might, maybe he doesn't know how to unmute himself. You might want to, I don't Mark, have the power to do that, but you might want to go in. Yeah, and if, you, if you take your, um, your cursor and hold it over the upper right hand corner of your I'm going to suggest this anyway. I've unmuted Mark. presentation. Hold it over the upper right hand corner of your picture. You'll see a mute come up and you can mute your yourself under that. You can mute and unmute from there. And I'm going to suggest as our next um, presenter comes up that we all do that. There's been a lot of background noises of things going on. So for those of you who are on the video. So Mark, are you there? It, it appears from the screen that Mark has unmuted himself, but it appears that possibly his computer, um, computer microphone is not on and that's why we can't hear him. Yeah, I don't know what the flashing check mark next to his, oh, here we go, oh. If you look under, under the list of participants, you can. Oh, does anybody know what the, oh, the check mark, he's starting to say yes. <laughs> yeah, the check mark means yes. What right. vote? Oh, maybe he's voting yes. A thumbs up. Okay. Mark, you're good to go. Okay, we're all set. So, so as we get to our next presenter, I, and I think, Nikki, if you're still there somewhere, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> so, already. Thank you, <laughs> thank you all. Um, so our next is the Harbor Department, and if everybody could mute themselves by doing that clicking up in the right hand corner and then we can unmute as we have questions at the end, that would be great. Audra, do you, I suppose Steve is there somewhere, do you want to introduce? So I'll be presenting this because Steve is away. Okay, um, so tab, tab 7, page 25, everybody. Oh, wait a minute, tab 7, page 26, sorry. For the Harbor Department, really, um, if everybody's there, the, the really notable changes are um, staff wages. <clears throat> A lot of that had to do with this was one department where um, the Harbor Master was, they were very, um, there was a huge disparity in where they were on the step and grade plan in relation to a lot of other department heads. And um, this is sort of like a phased plan to kind of get them up to a level that's more um, appropriate for a department head. And also there's some st seasonal staff there who are you know, um, long-term staff members who are returning every season and they weren't even on the step and grade plan. They hadn't been classified at all. So we, we classified those positions and so as a result, there's, there was a um, little bit of an increase in wages. 
but apart from that, everything is um, fairly, you know, it's, it's fairly um, even except for some of the equipment maintenance lines. Um, there's some, you know, uh, equipment when it comes to um, the public landing itself or the, the dock system that uh, the Harbor Master wanted to replace this year. Um, but other than that, it's, it's more or less um, pretty similar to what it was last year. We did have an increase in the boat insurance premium. And, you know, that's just sort of like a function of, um, you know, our, our provider and what they were offering that year. Um, but other than that, it's all pretty similar. So one thing to keep in mind about the Harbor Department, there is uh, corresponding revenue. So if you turn to the revenue sheet, which is tab two, and it's a green sheet in your, in your binder. So the harbor revenues, they can be found under charges for services, income from departments. And so there's, um, you know, the, the harbor permits, waitlist fees, uh, harbor dockage, permits for inner harbor floats, finger floats, the late fees and the, the dinghy docks, as well as um, the income that we get from permits for the uh, day sailor and windjammer fleet and the fishermen's permits. So all up, if you look at the revenue that this department brings in, it's about 90 to 100,000 more than what it costs to operate the department. All right, you kind of broke up there. It's 90 to 100,000 more than the cost of rent operating, right? Yes. So does anybody have any questions about the Harbor Department, Sophie? Yep. So uh, this summer could be also not a usual summer with not necessarily the same amount of revenue. So it's good to know that they're producing at least uh, 90. Um, so I guess also something to keep track of as everything else in our planning. Uh, so it would be, it would have maybe something to revisit with, with Steve and ask him if he has like experience. Cause we've had some previous seasons where the Harbor was not as vibrant as it was last summer. That's my first question. The second one, which is not related specifically to the Harbor, but it, could we have a, a spreadsheet with all the, the personnel on the budget and, and where their salary is drawn from? Um, so I understand that Steve's salary is, is split between the snowball and the harbor. It would be really useful to have just like one sheet with everybody and where, they, where, where their salary sits on the budget, please. So, so the way that Steve works is you see his full salary under the um, the full time wages, and it's reimbursed by the snowball. Yeah, so the snowball okay. reimburses the town for ten thousand dollars worth of, and that's that's Steve's okay. role. Okay, uh, useful to know, but still one spreadsheet with all the FTE and and how they are paid through all departments would also be useful, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions on the harbor? Income or expenses? No. Uh, I, I have a question. Oh. Hey, Richard, go ahead. Uh, didn't the day sailors permits go up this year? They're showing a reduction. I believe that they were, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that they were. Um, basically held the same this year. There was talk of increasing it, but um, I think by the time it got to the select board, um, it was determined that it was going to be about the same as this year. Well, it looks like it went down by $2,000. The revenue? Yes. And that's, that's kind of one of those lines. I mean, you know, we could certainly 
put it up to 21 as we did in FY20, but they're, they're kind of the first, um, you know, industry to come to the town and, and say that um, we're concerned we're not gonna have a season and um, we wanna hold off on paying our permit fees until we know if that's gonna happen. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah, Carla? Yeah, um, could you, Audra, please just comment on general maintenance and equipment maintenance? It looks like the numbers versus FY20 budget are significantly higher um, that Steve asked for. You cut those back a little bit, but still higher. So could you just sort of address what's happening in those line items, please? Yeah, so just for, for what Steve was explaining, it was just, you know, um, general sort of maintenance that it kind of wasn't big enough to really fall under a CIP. Um, you know, it was something that he could build into the operational budget. So it's, it's just, you know, replacing chains and, um, you know, other, other sort of equipment that's needed um, on the docks as well as on the, the landing itself. Okay. And if, if you'd like, you know, kind of more specifics about that, I can, I can get that from Steve. It's just the numbers jumped around. So I didn't know if there was something significant happening or it's just. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's, it's fairly, he'd like to make some fairly large improvements, but kind of not, you know, not to the level where it would be a CIP. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he wants to um, fix a lot of the decking on the boardwalk because we know it's going to be some years out before there's a really significant improvement made to that, but there's some fairly big repairs that need to be made. I think he also mentioned about a lot of replacing of the of chains um, yeah. around as well. That was brought up. I remember last year talking about how expensive the chain was. We had lots of discussions about that. We talked about the chain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Every boater's nightmare, the price of that chain. <laughs> Robin. Yeah. Robin. Yes, Jeff, uh, whatever your name is, John. John. <laughs> Hi, Robin. I have a question. Is this bottom chain we're talking about? I is this bottom chain? I can't. I'm not going to pretend to know exactly what the chain is that that. It is it's, Audra. It's bottom chain. Yes, the bottom chain needs but a the, diver. It's expensive. But the last time that we did the bottom chain, he was able to go out and find a substantial supply of it from someplace, which was a pretty good deal. Has he tried doing that again? From, it was, I can't remember where he got it, but he had quite a bit of it the last time we did it. It was probably been 10 or 12 years. And it was quite a savings. Audra? Sorry, John, you were cutting out. I had trouble hearing you. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of on this end, too. So I'm just curious as if he looked around for some um, savings on that bottom chain. Because when we did the dredging, we bought quite a substantial amount of bottom chain at that time. I know it's been a number of years, but it, it worked out as a good program at that time. I don't yeah, know if he's gone I, down that road again. I, I don't know what he's done. I don't know where he, he sort of got his price that he's basing this off from. It, Audra, it's also most likely um, not the cost of the bottom chain. The cost of money is the cost of installing it. Yeah, it was like $900 per dive at the time. That's where the money is, John. I know. I remember checking the the check of the staples and everything too, right? Uh, staples and links, yes. Okay, very good. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Any questions? More questions or a motion? I make a motion that we move the town manager's recommendation two hundred thirteen thousand six hundred dollars. Six fifty. Okay. All right. We have a roll call again. John French. Yes. Uh, Lisa Dresser. Yes. Uh, Richard Householder. Yes. Lorna Cummings. Yes. I'm a yes. Sandy Cox. Are you back? Go on, Sandy. Mark Corsi. Yes. Carla Doremus Tranfield. Yes. Kristen Sidwell. Yes. 
Mary Winchell. Mary. Oh, Mary, nod your head, Mary. You're on mute. <laughs> okay. Mary's a yes, she's on mute. Wendy Rich. Yes. yes. Sophie Romano. Yes. Beth Doan. Yes. Tyler, are you there? Tyler Smith? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, and Jim Hurd, are you there? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, all right, the motion passes then for 213, 600, or 213,650. So our next up is Harbor Department, or excuse me, is Recreation um, and Parks. Audra, if you want to introduce Beth. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the first budget that Beth Ward, our Parks and Recreation and Snow Bowl Director, will be presenting is for the Recreation Budget. So for those of you who are, who are new, the best way to think about this budget is the Snow Bowl during the summer or the Red Mountain Recreation Area during the summer and everything it to operate that um, facility, as well as the, um, the summer rec program. So I'll hand it over to Beth to explain the specifics. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, what is the, the page or, or number? Yeah, the page on here says page 32, but I'm actually looking at the book. It looks like um, culture and recreation starts on 28. Are we skipping to 32, Audra? It's 28. Page 28. 28. Okay. 28. Thank you. And again, if people could um, mute themselves, there's a lot of shuffling of paper during the course of the presentations. That would be great. Sorry, I've um, I've muted everyone, and um, I'll unmute Beth. I think I'm unmuted. Hi, hi everyone. Good evening. Um, so the first budget that you're going to look at is the recreation budget, and this um, has two um, two full-time employees that um, are six month. They're shared six month with recreation and six months with the snowball. And the over the only real um, major change is definitely under the wages and benefits, but otherwise it's pretty similar to last year's budget. Okay, are there any questions for Beth? Yes. So what is the, what is? Okay, go ahead, Lisa. What is the um, explanation for the big increase in the wages and benefits? Is it that extra payroll or is this leveling the playing field again or what's the deal? It was, I'll let Audra answer this, but I think it was a town-wide change in um, wages. But So it's, it's the combination of the, the extra pay period, um, uh, sort of step in, step in grade increases and the 3% COLA. So all those three things factor into that. Is there anything else with that, Jody, that I'm not fully explaining? No, you got it. Uh, Sophie, you had a question? Uh, yeah, a, a couple. So the program expenses in FY19 actual, it's about $1,500 and the budget is for 6,000. Can you, is it a conservative? budget or is it why is there such a, a difference um well i i think a couple of programs kind of um ended we stopped um running them that would be like the magana cook canoe race and a few other programs that we used to run i think that's why that number is down but um we've also gained um programs such as the lobster ride which we co-host with the Penn Bay Y. Um, and I just think we upped that. We also um, are doing more in terms of summer um, recreation camp with the Y. So we just, we bumped that up a little just to be conservative. Cool, um, that's my first one. Thank you so much. The second one is on larger expenses. It, it came out at $3,400 in your actuals of FY19, but you're only budgeting a thousand. So last year we um, did some lodge improvements. We 
re, um, we put the uh, new rug in the main lodge and a new flooring in the little cafeteria area that we shared with the snowball expenses. So not repeated this year. Okay, That's thank great. you so much. <clears throat> yep. Anybody else? No more questions or comments. Do we have a motion? Any motions? Yeah, I can. I can actually make a motion to uh, so to uh, so, uh, to vote for the manager's town's manager's budget of one hundred seventy thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars in support of the recreation uh, budget. Okay. If that's how right, I should formulate. Second, I'll second that. Okay, thank you. And um, if everybody could unmute themselves for the roll call, that would be great. Um, John French. John, you're muted. John is waving his hand. Yes. I can't. Um, there we go. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Lisa Dresser. Yes. Richard Householder. Yes. Lorna Cummings. Yes. I am a yes. Sandy Cox, are you gone still? I'm guessing he's gone. Mark Corsi. Yes. Carla Doremus Tranfield. Yes. Kristen Sidwell. Yes. Mary Winchell. Yes. Wendy Rich. Yes. Sophie Romano. Yes. Beth Doan. Yes. Tyler Smith. Tyler, you gone? Tyler's gone. Jim Hurd. Jim. Jim, you're on mute and I can't see you. Audra, can you unmute Jim? The, uh, yes. Okay, yes, thank you. Okay, did I miss anybody? Uh, Mark, you're still mute. Mark, I don't have you on here. Mark Haskell, are you muted? You are muted. Audra, can you, there, Mark. Mark, do you wanna vote on that? No, okay. I'm I think I saw an email from Mark that said he has no microphone. Oh, okay. Um, Mark, I'm sorry then, I don't know how to count you. Uh, okay, so the motion passes for $170,950, the town manager's budget. Um, um, Robin, Mark does seem to be very proficient with the hand raising function and the and the check mark function. Oh, can, you watch, can you I don't know that? if you uh, let me look here. Um, look for a sign of. Um, he keeps Mark moving. Is, Mark is raising his hand. I just saw it. So that was a yes for oh, Mark. Mark will oh, watch. Oh, maybe a no. Maybe a no, actually. With a red X. Red X. So X. I so think Mark, Mark is voting no. Yeah, he, 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 even, he did text. Yeah, there. he's voting no. Mark can't, is a no. Can't okay. um, he call up on a phone with one of the links in the email? Yeah, you could do that, Mark. You could call, go back to the email and just dial in. Or you could type into the chat box. Yeah. Audra, um, some of this is an, an issue with what is legally acceptable as well, everybody. Um, we had a big discussion. You can also do a survey poll on this, which would, would have been a lot easier um, for everybody, but it just it didn't pass legal muster for um, Mark, for our um, Kelly, our attorney. So um, anyway, Audrey, your, your call on, on um, Mark Haskell. Well, I mean, I think that it's fine, like him using that voting function because everybody could see it, but um, it might be better for Mark if he wants to participate the call. Mark, we leave that up to you. If you would like to call in and then we can hear you and you would have the ability to ask questions. Um, so I guess we're on to the next is, um, we just did Recreation and Parks, McGunnacook Dams, Audra, which is page 32. We still need to do uh, uh, parks, I'm sorry. Yeah, parks. <clears throat> so 
Age 30. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> so I'm gonna hand this one over to Beth as well. So this is, this is the other budget that she prepares. And this has to do with all of the parks in town outside of um, the Ragged Mountain Recreation Area. That's right. Um, so we have five parks employees and one custodian and they are seven months parks and five months snowball. Um, again, uh, no major changes from the last fiscal year's budget. Um, with that, with the exception of wages and benefits again, um, and as well as we are trying to replace another mower under the equipment line, we've bumped up that that line a little. We're going to share the costs with one of the um, parks re uh, reserve accounts to purchase that mower. I have a question, Robin. Yes, John. Have we finally charged the Camden uh, Farmers Market for some of the costs for mowing um, Tannery Park, Audra? We have not. When are we going to? That's a great question. We've been talking about it now for a long time, and they're not even Camden businesses. I understand they do a great fund, right. but they should pay for their fair share. Something. At this stage, um, the select board hasn't approved the um, license agreement for this summer. So there is still an opportunity uh, for that to be part of the license agreement. So that could very well be if the, you know, if the rest of the budget committee agrees with that, that could be a recommendation that you give to the select board for when they're um, renewing that license agreement. Can I ask what the cost is for mowing tannery, uh, tannery Park for the year? Uh, I don't really have that finite of a, a figure, but I could, I could figure that out. It must take a few hours a week to do it. Could you find out, Beth, please? Yes, yes, I could look Thank into you. that. Yep. Thank you. Do we have the full select board here, Audra? It's, um, you have, yes, you, you have the full select board. Just curious if they were hearing, everybody was hearing the conversation, that's all. I have a question, Robin. Yeah. Lorna? Uh, the trash removal line is a lot lower than the actual costs have been. Um, so I'm wondering about that. So it we, was, oops, we used to oh, share, in, um, if you look above, well, you see the trash removal and right below it, there's a new porta potty porta potties used to be in the same uh, trash removal line and we broke it out this year. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So then in that case, it's considerably higher than it was before. Yes. Like by $1,000, right? Not yes. that I don't want quality porta potties. <laughs> <laughs> Who does With it? lots of toilet paper. And hand sanitizer. <laughs> Beth, where'd you add the porta potties? It's ex it's higher, yes. Right, it's a total eighty five hundred dollars instead of sixty five hundred, seventy five hundred range. It's a thousand dollars more. Yeah. So over the years, John, that the, these expenses have just gone up over the years, and this is what I understand paying. that. This is what we're currently paying for we're, all the porta potties. Do we still share the dumpster down on the public landings with Ray Williamson? No. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, do we have a motion? I'd like to hold the motion until the select board decides on the Cannery Park. That's not fair. That's just me. <laughs> Can I ask a question about the, just the quick mowing? I don't want to talk for long about the mowing, but would we have to, would we be mowing that area anyway? Would we be able to cease all mowing of that area if the farmer's market were not there? Who knows? It might be wildflowers growing. 
you know, nature. Mm -hmm. I think we do at least have to mow the area of the um, BRAP according to the main DEP because we can't have trees growing into the um, mm. into the cover system for environmental reasons. But what, so what's the farmer's market licensing revenue to the town? A dollar. Ah. What's that? I think it's a dollar. A dollar. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're suggesting, John, that the mowing expense be moved to the farmer's market. Some of it. Uh, some not of all it. of it, but they certainly should pay some of it. Tyler, did you have a question? I saw your box light up here. No. Any other questions? Or okay, Lisa, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so even if we were to get the vendors to pay for part of the mowing, it would just mean we wouldn't have to spend so much out of this current budget. Is that correct? I mean, we would have leftover surplus in, in the lines if, if we happen to be able to negotiate with them to pay for some of the mowing. Am I not looking at that correctly? It would be an offsetting revenue. Okay. So given that, I would move the town manager's re recommendation of $274,010. There a second? We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded. Okay. All right. So we have a motion for the town manager's budget of $274,010. Um, we'll do a roll call again. Is John French? Yes, Robin. Yes, sir. Yes, Robin. I'd like you to start at the other end of the list. <laughs> Richard Householder. Yes. Lorna Cummings. Yes. I'm a yes. Mark Haskell. Mark, can I? Uh, Mark is a no. Um, Mark, no. Okay. Sandy Cox, still gone. Mark Corsi. Yes. Carla. Yes. Yes. Kristen Sidwell. Yes. Mary Winchell. Yes. Wendy Rich. Yes. Sri Romana. Yes. Beth Doan. Yes. Tyler Smith. Tyler, I'm seeing you on here, but I'm not hearing you. So, um, and then Jim Hurd. Yes. Yes. Um, all right, so the motion passes for the town manager's budget of $274,010. Okay, I guess that that's it for Parks and Rec, correct, Beth? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Good, yeah, thank you. So thank you very much. Um, McGonna Cook Dams is up next and that there is no page number on that. Did we get that? No. Page 32. So usually uh, David Volstridge presents this because he is our uh, dam um, <laughs> agent. Um, he's not here tonight because uh, uh, the wastewater budget has been pushed back to next week um, because we weren't able to send it out to all of you uh, due to everything getting pushed back a little bit. Um, so I can. I can talk to this. It has been um, reduced pretty significantly in comparison to FY20. And that has to do with the fact that there was some uh, maintenance work that needed to be done in FY20 um, that, that doesn't need to be done this year. Uh, sorry, maintenance and inspection work. So that accounts for the, the decrease. Um, there was, uh, you know, the, the stipend did increase for the uh, dam control agent. Um, and a lot of that has to do with we've, we need people on call um, to be able to 
you know, uh, change the dams when there's, you know, going to be a rain event and we want to prevent flooding. Um, so, you know, we need to have those, we need to pay those people that are on call doing that, that sort of work. Um, and it's, it's become sort of, um, you know, just having that person, we need to rotate staff through. So it's, it isn't always the same person. Um, and also just the, the normal wages and benefits um, stuff that we talked about previously. Uh, however, if you have any, you know, more questions specifically about this budget, uh, you can ask them next week. So, you know, I'll leave it to um, the committee to decide whether or not you want to vote on it tonight, or if you'd like to hear more from Dave Bolstrich when he presents. Is there any, do you have a preference? Is there a proposal or to postpone or to vote this evening? I'll see what we can vote on tonight. Vodra is pretty clear on the changes and I don't see anything substantial coming forward. Is that correct, Vodra? Yeah, I mean, anything substantial would be under the, the CIP and we'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll talk about that the next meeting as well. Can I have, uh, ask just one question? Um, yeah. What is the hydro fund uh, in the Seabright Dam? There's a hydro fund are budgeted here. What's the hydro fund? So when that dam was originally um, given to the town of Camden, it, it generated electricity. It was a FERC, a Federal Energy Regulatory Commission regulated dam because it produced power and um, sort of over the course of the town owning and operating it, it became very clear that, um, you know, there were some changes in, in um, subsidy provided for, um, you know, that, that sort of dam and also some um, major capital upgrades that needed to occur. And all those combinations of factors just made it not economically viable as an, um, to operate it as a hydroelectric dam. And so the, the hydro fund, that's kind of a holdover from when it was operating as a, as a hydro fund and there was some revenue associated with it. And some of the um, expenses that we budget for now are associated with um, you know, shutting it down as an operating hydroelectric facility. So there's things that we've had to do like um, you know, uh, fix the, the powerhouse, um, yeah. we did, you know, remove the three phase power and just, you know, stuff like that. So, but that's, that's done, right? Or is there, or is there still a handover, a hangover, um, still some expenses to be incurred in FY21 to, to finish yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, we're still kind of finishing that process. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or proposal? I move we accept the awesome. town manager's 23,000 Four hundred dollars. Second. Seconded. Okay. Roll call. Let me just write this down. Um. Okay, John French. Yes. Lisa Dresser. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Richard Householder. Yes. Lorna Cummings. Yes. Yes, Mark Haskell. Mark is Mark is indicating a yes. Um, Mark Corsi. Yes. Carla Doremus Tranfield. Uh, no, I prefer to wait until after we hear the full dam presentation. Um, Kristen Sidwell. Yes. Mary Winchell. Yes. Wendy Rich. Yes. Sophie Romano? Yes. Beth Doan? Yes. Tyler Smith? Not hearing anything from Tyler again. Jim Hurd? Yes. Yes. Okay. Carla, I will say we can, um, you can, I would think, ask a question next week if you want, and we can always revisit if there's something significant. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. Is that it for dams, Audra? Yes. All right. So that means we're moving on to cemeteries, which is tab eight, page 
All right. So this is this is probably one of the most significant changes that um, that, that I'm recommending um, in comparison to FY20. So if you if you look at how it works with um, cemeteries, so it had always been that the town um, provided a certain amount of work, and that's that's reflected in the cemetery maintenance budget. So the you know the the budget that shows the, the wages, um, the equipment, and uh, supplies, and that's the sixty six thousand three hundred. So the town the town would budget for that work. Um, the cemetery association would reimburse the town for that amount, and then the town would supplement the cemetery association's trust fund with about. You know, in the past it was about forty-eight thousand, and that year it was a fifty-eight thousand expense. So there was always like a ten thousand dollar difference between um, what what the town provided in work and what the cemetery association um, provided in terms of uh, reimbursement to the town. So um, you know, it was about a ten thousand dollar expense to taxpayers. And the idea was that um, you know the town was helping to um, get the trust fund up to a level where uh, it could eventually you know cover the operational expenses of you know the maintenance expenses for the cemetery. And for for years it was kind of unknown as to what the cemetery's endowment funds looked like, and so it it seemed prudent, it was prudent to continue to do that. However, we have a much better handle on what our investments look like and the, in, the income from those investments. And at this stage, the cemetery endowment fund is extremely healthy. Um, and I, I understand that there's a lot going on with the stock market right now that's creating a lot of uncertainty there, but rest assured, it's very healthy. It's well over a million dollars. Uh, last year, it generated over 120,000 in, uh, in just investment income alone. So, you know, even with the, you know, the uncertainty in the stock market, I'm very confident that the town no longer needs to supplement that endowment fund. Um, it's at a, it's at a level where, you know, it's, it's reached the stage where it can be self-supporting and we no longer need to use taxpayer money to continue to supplement those funds. So that's why I'm proposing um, that we do not we do not provide that money to the cemetery association this year. So does that make sense to everyone? It is kind of it's kind of a um, confusing setup where we've got you know money spent expenses from the town, revenues from the you know, the cemetery endowment fund and then another expense to the town for the cemetery endowment fund. Um, yeah. you know, I can, it, it took me a while to understand how this all works. So if it's confusing, please ask questions. I have a question, Robin. Yes, John. So Audra, in the past, they've always seemed to have been short on money, money, maybe because they didn't know how much they had in their endowments. Um, so that means that we're going to have a, a more aggressive plan as far as the Mountain View, Mountain Street Cemetery, which is a dire need of some major upgrades. And because um, it's always been that we didn't have money enough to do the trees, to do the, you know, the stones that need repaired and, and do the cleaning. So is that something that now they have money is going to be more aggressive in the future and getting done? I think Allison's <laughs> place to answer that question because she's the um, the liaison to the cemetery association. Yeah, I mean, there, there have been a lot of conversations about that. I think um, Audra's summary is, is correct that in the past, um, there was concern about not having enough money in that endowment fund. The cemetery committee, the way it works is really quite complicated. We have a cemetery ordinance. Um, and in town, it says the cemetery ordinance says that the cemetery is managed not by the town in the typical way that we would manage, you know, one of our town parks, but the cemeteries are managed by the cemetery association, which then have, has bylaws. Um, 
it's been um, definitely a topic of conversation, the Mountain View, um, you know, the state of, of Mountain View. One of the things that they've had, they have had a hard time getting um, uh, the Sexton having enough time to do the work um, that needs to happen there. But um, I do think we're, they're making a lot of progress and it's been, it's been talked about a lot. Um, and the endowment funds are, are extremely healthy. So you know, for the last few years, they were budgeting to do a little bit more maintenance of the Mountain View Cemetery. Um, and I think it was, it was frustrating to, to people to see those funds consistently budgeted, but then not used. Um, and it, it, it seems like there's a plan to do a little bit more. We also last year, because of um, that same frustration, we actually put money in the town budget um, because we just, it was just five or $10,000 to get some kind of volunteer stone cleaning program going or something. Um, since then, we learned that the endowment funds are really so healthy that that shouldn't, um, that shouldn't need to happen. But that, it's, a, it's a great topic to bring up with the, the cemetery committee. They have a lot more um, power than the average. They're not just they're not just an advisory committee to the select board as most of our committees are. They actually um, have the power to, to make the decisions about what happens in the cemetery as I'm sure you know. So um, anyway, I, we could talk about the cemetery yeah, a lot. Send an email to, to, to Jeff Suforth, who's the, cha who's the chair of the cemetery committee. I have a question, um, if I may. Yep. Um, why was it a mystery how much was in the endowment? Why wasn't it known how much was in it? Well, I think it, I think it was known, um, but it's, you know, that there, it, it's a group of people that are, I, I think, conservative by nature in terms of not wanting to spend any more than they need to. And so um, it may have been known by them, but since it's been really quite well managed over the years by this core cemetery committee group, I think um, a lot of the time, since there's so much that happens in town that we have to learn about, that that mostly the select board has said, okay, we you know we follow the recommendations of the cemetery um, committee, and then over a, over a few years, that um, you know the stock market did very very well, and so that those funds ballooned. It's, it's not that there's been a million dollars sitting in there for a, a really long time, but maybe over the last, you know, three or four years, it really has gotten bigger. And now everybody's, you know, different people are starting to ask questions and, and realizing, oh, wow, it's, you know, a, a lot bigger than the last time that we had looked and known that it was a, an issue of concern. So I don't know if Jody, um, Jody might have more to add on that, but um, I think it's just gotten a lot bigger. I think also um, prior to, to my arrival, the way that these investment funds were reported to the finance director, um, basically the cemetery committee can spend interest and income for these investment accounts. And it's a lot every year. Um, I'm not sure how it was calculated before, um, but from what I'm seeing, they were, they were withdrawing around fifteen thousand dollars a year from each of these investments account investment accounts, and there are two. There's a, a, a Mount View and an Oak Hill. Um, so they were pulling minimal money out to offset their budget. Um, so I just um, I've let them know what each year their both of their accounts have earned in interest and in investment income. So um, that's uh, that's where we came up with it. I mean, and there are capital improvement issues that, that do come up from time to time. And so, um, you know, all of the, the paving needs to be redone at, at Mountain View or their tombs or their, um, there's an, an area in Mountain View that is sinking a little bit because it was too wet. Um, and so I think they've wanted to be really sure that they have a, a, a lot there for when major things need to happen, but that maybe, I mean, I personally agree with Audrey that we've reached that tipping point where it's um, a little bit more needs to be spent. 
So that's Sophie, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I have a question. So I come from a country that has a very different funding models for a cemetery where people buy 99 year uh, concessions in cemeteries. So I'm wondering what is the revenue? How does the cemetery, how do the cemeteries get their revenue? And this kind of current question is, does the full budget of the cemetery sit with the town or is it with the association, the cemetery association? Yeah, so we actually have that same model here. There's the perpetual care um, and, but at one point it got to a lot of the, the grave sites in Mountain View, for example, are there from even before a perpetual care system would have um, started. So it was the, it's the oldest cemetery in town. So um, we ended up a little bit behind on that in terms of you know the amount that needed to be needs to be done. Um, so the idea of the town contributing was more to to reach that to kind of balance so that it could be self sustainable in the way that that is supposed to be. Is is my understanding. And, and so are we now on the way where it's sustainable and, and the cemetery association can just draw from the endowment for the maintenance or I think not? that's, yeah, that's, that's the argument that Audra as a, is, is making. Um, and there's probably gonna be a little bit of pushback from the cemetery committee, I would imagine. Um, I haven't heard the, maybe the best argument. I haven't heard their argument for, um, or continued what, why it should be different since you know since Audra took a, a hard look at their request um I haven't heard what they've said in response to her changes but Robin? Um, yeah they might say no but Audra believes yes um okay. yeah there there is um I I don't know about the committee at large there's certainly at least one member who um I, I think it's just you know, because they never had that certainty around what the actual endowment funds were doing. Um, you know, they're just they're they're just concerned that you know that money won't be available into the future. I think it's just because they've been really prudent about manage managing them all these years that, um, and they're worried about the what the stock market is doing now. So I think that that's that's kind of their objection to changing the way that we're doing things, but. I, I just truly believe we've hit that tipping point where um, there's just so there's so much money available that taxpayers don't need to continue continually um, supplement this endowment fund. John, you had a question. Well, I just comment: Isn't it time then that the, they come up with a plan, run it by the select board, and go out with RFPs to get some of this work done? Because I mean, we have an obligation because there's a lot of veterans graves up there. And the town has an obligation to the veterans to make sure that their graves are kept. So, I mean, we need to at least do that. And it's time. This has been going on way too long. I, yeah, we've had, we've had some tense conversations about it, actually. Um, I'm sure you have. Um, and your, I think your input would be, would be meaningful um, for the cemetery association, too. Um, yeah, I, I think it's it is past a point where um, you know the, the sexton alone can't do all the work that needs to be done, and it, it would it would require hiring outside contractors to help come and do some of this work. I agree. Audrey, do you need two motions, or do you just need one motion? So I um, I would need two motions. So one for the cemetery association budget, and then one for the cemetery maintenance budget. Oh, and we, we didn't really talk about any specific in that budget. Um, the, the biggest piece in that is the equipment line, and that's for the purchase of a new mower. And again, that's another one of those pieces of equipment where um, it's, it's kind of under the level um, of, of putting it under the capital improvement budgets. So that's why we've included it here in the uh, cemetery maintenance budget. And so that mower will be specifically for the cemeteries. And that line item would go back to its usual funding for next year. Correct. Is this shared with the recreation department this mower? Well, the, I mean, you know, the, it will, it'll sit within the parks and rec department, um, yeah. but given the type of mower it is and the function it's gonna have, it'll be used primarily on cemeteries. 
Okay. It'll be part of the fleet and maintained as part of that fleet. Equipment. So you need a motion then for the first one for the town manager's recommendation of, was it 48,000? No, it's zero. No, no, zero. 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 We're on 33, right? 30, yeah. Correct. At the top, the top she zeroed that out. Oh, yes, I see it now, Audra. You're so, all right, zero. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, just a, it's just a little unclear to have a dash there mm -hmm. instead of a zero. I would reformat that specific one to actually zero. Do we have a second on that? Second. 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 All right. Roll call. John French. Yes. Lisa Dresser. Yes. Richard Householder. Yes. Lorna Cummings. Yes. I am a yes. Mark Haskell. I've lost you. He's Mark Haskell is a yes. Um, Sandy Cox is still gone, I assume. Mark Corsi. Yes. Carla Doremus Tranfield. Yes. Kristen Sidwell. Yes. Mary Winchell. Yes. Wendy Rich. Yes. Sophie Romana. Yes. Beth Doan? Yes. I'm assuming Tyler is still gone. And Jim Hurd? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, and I'll just as a point of order here, it appears that Sandy Cox and Tyler Smith have both left the meeting. So I won't call them anymore unless they reappear. Um, we, do, we do still have a quorum though. So just doing the counting. Okay, um, that takes care of both cemeteries and cemetery associations. Well, we need another motion, uh, right? We need, we need another motion. motion. That's right. Second, second on the maintenance. Sorry. For sixty-six thousand three hundred dollars. Second. Okay, right. motion for sixty-six thousand three hundred dollars for cemetery maintenance, um, and another, another roll call. John French. Yes. Lisa Dresser. Yes. Richard Householder. Yes. Lorna Cummings. Yes. Robin McIntosh. Yes. Mark Haskell. Mark keeps. Mark, are you there? I don't see Mark. Um, he's, he's checked. Yes, I can see it. That's okay. Mark is a yes. Sandy, uh, uh, Mark Corsi. Yes. Carla Doremus Tranfield. Yes. Jim Sidwell. Yes. Mary Winchell. Yes. Wendy Rich. Yes. Sophie Romana. Yes. Uh, Beth Doan. Yes. Uh, Jim Hurd. Yes. Okay. Anybody there who I missed? The motion carries for $66,300. Now, can, onto, I, can I ask yeah. a question before we, we uh, finish this matter? So the $48,000 that we used to give to the, can, to the cemetery association, it's, it's no longer budgeted. It, does it offset another expense in our revenue or is it reverting back to the reserve? What's the mechanism when you do the budgeting or draw when you zero so, line like this? So that'll just be... $48,000 less in overall expenses. But it doesn't offset any other part of the budget, right? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, Audra, debt capital contingency revenues, I believe, is next. Um, so, or, or did you? I, I think that it'd probably be best to wait until next week to go over all of the, you know, the CIP and um, you know, kind of finalize that and the capital reserves, um, okay. you know, especially given the discussion we've had about, you know, potentially, um, you know, looking at some reserve funds that we might want to, uh, you know, change or areas that we might want to increase. So I can, I can sort of bring back some, you um, you know, areas that the budget committee might want to consider uh, for next week. Um, so the next thing, and this is the budget committee um, doesn't really have a role in formally voting on this, but we, you know, give it to you um, 
for advisory purposes so that you can ask questions and you know, give us your opinions and the select board can get feedback on it is the snowball budget. And um, Beth Ward can present that. Did everybody get the most updated version? Yes. 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 Okay, great. So I'll hand it over to Beth to present the snowball budget. Good evening, everyone again. Um, so we're on the same page, I believe. Page, uh, there's a nice photo of our beautiful A-frame lodge as uh, the opening page. And then the second page is um, kind of a summary of the accounts. And I'm happy to go through each um, account if you all want to, or we can just um, dive in on maybe some changes or expenses I see coming for next season. Yeah. Would you like to tell us how the season went this year to start and give us an overall? Well, that's still kind of uh, the, nu the number is still kind of um, out there because we're still uh, waiting for some receivables to come in. Um, we did end a little earlier than we anticipated, given the um, why we're all home tonight. Um, but I think we'll have a pretty, pretty... Um, we may be a little bit in the red, but I think we're going to be uh, in pretty good shape. Right, Jody? That's correct. <laughs> Audra, what do you think is the best way to proceed? Leave it to you and Beth. Yeah, I think um, Beth can go through uh, all the different parts of her budget. Um, and just kind of explain any significant changes. There's really only, there's, there's really one big um, change over last year that it would be good to get feedback on. Um, but Beth, you can go through kind of just explain how the snowball budget works and okay. you know, break down between, you know, snowball versus town and where everything sits. Yeah, absolutely. So the snowball budget um, for Holly and I, the two um, full-time folks, we are uh, uh, within this budget for six months and we're shared with recreation, the other six. Um, we have eight parks, full-time parks guys that come over and do different jobs at the snowball uh, for five months um, out of the season. Um, and we hire up to a hundred seasonal staff to cover ski school to cover grooming to cover patrolling the mountain um you know all the different uh labor lines that you'll see when we get to that um but as for um one major change that we're um we're questing this year is we have two old groomers we have a uh, 2008 and a 2002 groomer that we would like to trade in for a new to us um winch groomer, which will be very efficient um, for the staff. Number one, it will cut down on snowmaking, especially on Muscle Ridge. Um, it'll also cut down on hours that we have to groom and it will be w way more safe for the groomer folks themselves to drive the machines. Um, and we're just, I, I hope Jody will chime in. We're just holding, having a placeholder number here for this because we, the groomer that we were in line to purchase was sold underneath us. So we're now on a search for another used one. So basically what I've done in this current budget that you see, if you go to page 12, um, it's I've created a new line under capital improvement debt. And worst case scenario, our purchase of a brand new groomer would be about $500,000. From what I'm understanding, we may be able to get a, a new to us in relatively good shape. So that will be maybe three hundred thousand um, dollars. So on the offset side, in the revenue portion of the of the snowball budget, you're also going to see um, an offset of five hundred thousand dollars because we would we would need to bond this money, and um, so. Our hope is uh, whatever we spend on a new a groomer, um, we can take delivery of that groomer um, October or, or November of 
um, 2020 um, and, uh, and make our first bond payment in FY22. So it wouldn't be reflected in this FY21 budget. Again, the only things you're gonna see is the expense of the groomer and the revenue from the bond proceeds. So whatever the whatever we come up with, the revenue will will match the expense to purchase that groomer. Thanks for that explanation. Um, so with that said, um, if you want to go to page three, well, this is the admin. This is everything um, where we do our professional development, where we do our marketing. Um, a little bit went up in our gen general liability insurance. Um, that is based on skier days. And last, last season, we had um, a record skier days with our, mo our March snowfall that we had. So that pushes our insurance up a little bit. Um, if anybody has questions on this um, part of the budget, I'm happy to answer. Hmm. So, Beth, so, so we did one, just one groover over recently, right? Completely just did it over? Yes, I think that was in 2017, possibly. I don't know the exact date of that one. Yeah, it's within three years, two, three years ago. So that allows you to have one decent groomer and you got two more that you want to trade in. Yes, we had to do some major maintenance to them this season. So what would that allow? Well, we'll leave with the two groomers with one new one and one and the one we just redid, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I have a hey, question so on mark marketing. Going back to 2017, we were spending twenty three thousand, almost twenty four thousand dollars a year in marketing. Yeah. What? And it's it's going back up, which is great because you're not going to get anybody without the marketing. But what, what was that drop that we did there? We went from 23 to 15 to 10. Um, or no, 23 to 10. The previous director um, had gone to a, a marketing firm. And um, when I was hired, I chose to do a lot of marketing in-house. Um, okay. So we saved, we saved a lot of money. Okay, great. Hey, Beth, what happened with workers' comp? For the last uh, three years, we've had no expense, and now we have a $10,000 budgeted item. Did we have some, some problems last year? Um, I think the budget committee uh, last year, or maybe it was the select board, asked that the Snowball start putting that into their budget, into our budget. Um, but jo Jody or Audra might be able to talk, talk about that more than I can. Yeah, so there's there's really no way to break out um, workers' comp in terms of what's Snowball versus what's the town of Camden. Um, you know, so we can't we can't have like a separate workers' comp policy for the Snowball um, than the town. So it's all all together. And so I think that in recognition of the fact that um, you know workers' comp is an expense and um, you know, the, the snowball contributes to that expense. The select board wanted to budget something towards it. And so that's why that's okay. it. Yep. I, I have a, a question on the credit card fees. I'm, I'm congratulating you from, for going from 26,000 to 500. Can you uh, shed some light on this? Thank you. Yes, we um, decided to go through a state run credit card processor because we are owned by the town. We can fall under those, just like you can't, you get, you have to pay the interest when you pay for your taxes through the town office. Folks that want to use a card at the Snowball also has to um, have the processing convenience fee added on to whatever they're purchasing that way. Thank you. So the only fee really now in that line represents what we pay to um, issue gift cards through the Snowball. Okay, I can move on to the next, um, go to the next two pages. This is the lodge and the maintenance shop. This is really building maintenance and cleaning supplies. Um, and we pay our full-time custodian out of this one who is five months snowball. You will see under the building maintenance line, um, 
where we did a lot of work uh, to the lodge, including the rugs and, and stuff there, so. Are we budgeting enough for heat? It looks like we're budgeting at the lowest amount of act. But where am I? Jody, I don't have my actual sitting in front of me at the moment. Do you know what this year's actuals for heat are at, at the moment? Yeah, let me just pull that up. Okay. So between LP gas and the heating oil, we've spent about $6,200. Wow. So maybe we do need to go up a bit on that. Yeah. Hmm. At least up to the actuals of twenty eight of FY19, right? Yeah. That would make sense, even though it's been a nicer winter so far. I'll um I'll highlight that Beth and we can we can look at that. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so next so account same for your, your kitchen propane is gonna be the same issue. You're under budgeting there too. Uh we get paid back for our kitchen propane by oh. vendor. So this it's kind of just a placeholder. I see. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions on this line? The next one is the big line, and this is our Alpine. This has all of the wages for the different um, non-admin or custodial um, folks that you can see there. Um, also has a large uh, electricity um, line, um, as well as vehicle repairs and maintenance. Um, I do have set aside some money in that line specifically for a, oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's a, it's a piece, it's a, it's a piece of equipment that they hook to the back of the groomer and it went, not the winch, it, um, it crushes the ice before the tillers go through it. So it will save a lot of time and effort after a rain or a real hard hard uh, surface that we have to groom through one, two, three times before we get the, the, the snow that we want. This will save a ton of time for the groomers for that. So, no, Sophie? Yeah, the lift, uh, do you need repair on the lift? Yes, this year we have to do an NDT testing every- I, I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know what that acronym means, if you can. Um, you're going to catch me here. <laughs> or explain me, explain to me if, if you don't know the acronym, what it means. Um, it's non-destructible testing. Okay. So every, <laughs> a third of the chairs have to be taken off and tested. Um, and this is something that is a, a law that we have to do. And we're, we're, we have to do this next season before we open. So over this, after July 1st, we have to do this. And that's in a that's a bit of expense for us. So. I see in other years that we've um, budgeted for a contingency, which we have not this yeah. or not this year. Yes, um, and we talked about it. Audra and I and Jody talked about it. Um, I just feel like the last few seasons we've we've done well enough that we didn't need to put that in. Um, I'm welcome to some advice, I guess, for that. I think also we talked about possibly allowing the select board to make that call on based on their comfort level. And I guess to add to that, um, one of the, you know, in the um, general fund budget in the reserve accounts, we did budget 25,000 for the snow bowl. So that in effect is a contingency. You, you have a, for your snow making electricity, you're under budgeting compared to your FY19 expense. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure why that FY19 expense is so high right off the top of, I, 
there was something that happened and I, I can't recall it right now. Um, but this, this is based on a certain hours of snowmaking and with, these, yeah. And with these new improvements with the groomer and this, I can't, I can't remember the name of this thing, the revolver or something. It's, it's a funny name. Um, it's going to, it's going to be more efficient. We won't need to make as many hours of snow. So we don't need to re revisit this this line. Yes. You're confident we're, you're, you'll, you'll have enough. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Anything else on that? Is it, would it be, I have one, one request. Um, Beth, I think at the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned that you had modeled how the savings that the new groomer would bring. Would it be possible to have that spreadsheet as an annex, just to have an idea of the, the savings that you're actually looking at? At this point, I think it would be a guess because we haven't lived with the stuff. Um, but I, I, could, I could probably get an estimate from Tom and to what he's thinking that's gonna be. Yeah, and, and, and I think it would be very useful to, to keep track. I mean, it would show in the budget year over year, but just to... Uh, just to, to keep track would be interesting. Sure. Thank you. Okay, so the next line uh, is the rental shop. And this is where all of our um, rental fleet gear, uh, any of the maintenance to that gear and the folks, the technicians that work um, the five months out of the year. Question, Beth. Yeah. Are we still playing playing Charlie, or is it all staff now? Um, I believe we have. Um, he is still doing the preseason um, testing on on the uh, equipment for us. Yeah, that's reflected in the twelve thousand dollars. Is this the last year of that agreement? Um. Uh, well, I don't, I would have to have someone trained with his abilities. Um, I thought that's what you were doing. Well, yes, he, 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 yes, we are doing that, but he is still doing the testing that is required by the equipment, um, the brand, before we can rent it yearly. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you might be right. This may be the last year. I think there was like a three year um, commitment to him, John. I thought so too. Do we have um, income from that? I'm just looking. Um, yeah, that's back at the beginning on the right. the rental shop. Um, I'm suggesting that, or I'm pro projecting that we'll bring in seventy five thousand. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I was missing a page there. All right. Okay, any more questions on that? And then there's Toboggan Nationals next. Toboggan Nationals. No big, no big leaps here. I mean, it's, it's pretty conservative. Um, I, how much did we bring in this year? 50 plus. We brought in, we um, brought in about 80 something thousand this year. And we, um, with our, minus our expenses, we're about 50, $52,000 of revenues from Tobago Nationals this year. Hey, uh, Beth, uh, on that topic, I thought that the Tobago Nationals had the biggest crowd ever this year. And so do you need to make um, some kind of changes or uh, to accommodate a growing crowd in the coming years, if the trend continues, we don't know. I, I think I think we're at our capacity. To be honest, um, okay. yeah. Capacity on parking. Yeah. We can't have more parking. Do, I don't know if this is an appropriate spot for it, but do you want to, or Audra, I guess, ask you um, have a conversation or a little bit of discussion, or maybe not discussion. Um, just have Beth tell us a little bit about where things are. That's been a lot of discussion over the years with the lodge and what was going on with that, and whether we were 
what was happening with mountain biking and all that moving forward um, has always been part of these conversations. Is that something still in the works and where do we stand with all of that? We are in the works, or I say we, the foundation, the Ragged Mountain Foundation is still interested in doing some fundraising for a new lodge. Um, and we're in hopes that they will continue. Um, that's really all I, all I know at this point. And are there still programs for more year round use with bicycling and all that kind of stuff going on for more income and I would say with the discussions around um, mountain biking, a lot of it is going to be sort of anchored by the um, round the mountain trail. So I think that, you know, a lot of the groups that we were talking with about, um, you know, enhancing trails and, you know, uh, greater you know, connectivity of mountain biking trails, um, everybody's sort of waiting for the round the mountain trail to be finished before mm -hmm. we can move forward with a lot of that. So wouldn't you say, Beth, that's pretty. Yeah. That's Especially important. in terms of traffic, we need to know like where the round the mountain is going to lay on the mountain and then what else can, in, you know, kind of intertwine, if you mm -hmm. will. I really don't think it's going to disrupt their current um, trails and we can do, we, we have some um, budgetary things set aside to do some improvements to some of those in, in terms of sign, better signage and um, material on those trails, so. Yeah, that's been a big focus too, is just trying to make what we have safer and, and clearer in terms of, you know, signage and layout um, so that they're, you know, they're more usable for, a, you know, uh, a more variety of um, levels of skill and abilities. Right. I think the biggest thing, and this is what's kind of been emphasized to us a lot, is that we really need to focus on the needs of uh, beginners and young riders. Um, so I think that that's something that once the Round the Mountain Trail is finished, we really want to look hard at because that's going to be, you know, most beneficial, I think, for the greatest number of community members. And what's the schedule on? Is that three years or am I making that up? Well, they prolonged the beginning at the Snow Bowl this fall. They bumped it back for spring. So I'm not really sure where they stand at this point. No, I'm curious. Okay. Anything else? What do you What do you need from us? Or are there more questions about the Snow Bowl? Or um, I, if you guys have any more questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm not sure exactly what the town needs. Um, whether you need to vote in, ter in terms of support of this. Or do we do nothing? I'm not sure, Audrey. Well, I guess with this one, you don't need to do a roll call vote. You could just do like a show of hands um, if there are no more questions. And that would give the select board members who are watching a good idea of, um, you know, just if there are any concerns that they might need to take into consideration when they're finalizing this budget. Would that be helpful for the select board members that are here? We have yeah. hands up there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 I, I will say just having been on um, CDAC, the Community Economic Development Advisory Committee, we've long looked at the snowball as, you know, a real asset to the community, even when it occasionally goes in the red, that it's just a wonderful asset and certainly brings business to the community and people to the community. And um, there's a lot of support from that group for the snowball going forward. So we put that out there as well. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? So, so does that mean that that Beth, you're going to go ahead and 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 look for that groomer, and that process is going to be undergoing? Has this been voted on last week, or it's a new, you're going to go ahead with that, or do you need to vote for that or the budget? I'm I'm a bit confused. Um, we are why we're not voting on this. We are shopping for the groomer. Um, 
we don't have one in mind at the moment, but we're shopping. And this is just the, the, the 500,000 is just a placeholder for us that if sure. we find one, we can move forward with it. And so um, Beth will need the select board to approve the snowball budget before she can officially move forward. Like if she found one tomorrow, say, she would need the select board to approve this budget before she could uh, actually, you know, go and purchase the groomer. Thank you. Audra, are you looking at a five or 10 year bond or for that or for 20? I think that the we we're going to try to finance that for as long a term as possible, and I believe it was 15 years was the maximum. Is that correct, Jody? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at is 15. Have you looked at the lease purchase with some of the companies too? Because sometimes they'll give you a heck of a deal. Um, we will be looking at that, but there is also a limit on what we can finance through a lease. Well, we did the fire truck on the seven-year lease purchase. That was 640,000. Yep, I, I have calls out to our banker that gives great advice. So he never steers us wrong, so. Uh-huh, okay. I Thank think you. from a financing perspective with this, it's gonna be more about um, cash flow year to year because of the fact that um, the Snowball will be paying the debt service on this groomer. So, it's, it's the balance of making sure that um, their revenues can cover that additional expense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to get a little bit of clarity on the what the select board needs to do in order to be able to move forward with the groomer. I think I heard at the beginning that um, a, a groomer was bought out from under us, maybe because because I'm imagining because of just the slow process of, of town government and there was one that we wanted to buy, but can somebody explain a little bit more? Is, is there, are we missing opportunities because of some structure that isn't allowing us to act quickly enough or? That could have been the possibility. Um, but I just think there was a buyer and a need for this season and they just grabbed it because they knew it was going to be um, up for sale. Okay, because I guess I wasn't aware. This is the first I've personally heard about this. And so um, I guess I just maybe, Audra, could you just explain what the, what the process is and what you need the select board to do or can the groomer be handled separately from the, the entire budget or um, it just seems like it's going to be quite a while before the select board approves the budget or maybe not why is it that the, why why don't we have to wait for town meeting if we have to wait for the select board to approve the snowball budget then why don't we also have to wait for town meeting to approve the overall budget we should you should have to wait. Right. I mean, they all kind of, they both dovetail together. So, I mean, we, we just chose to do it as part of the, um, you know, the normal um, annual budget process with the snowball, um, you know, which, which the select board approves that budget. Um, we, I mean, I suppose we could certainly you know, if there, if Beth were to find like a great deal tomorrow, we could bring that to the select board and, and you could approve it ahead of time. And then we I mean, could... we'd have to find a funding mechanism for it that doesn't require town meeting approval. So I'm only aware of a couple sources ah. for that one would be select board contingency or some other reserve account set up for that purpose. Right. Well, we're not proposing that the groomers funded through the general fund. We're proposing it's funded through the snowball. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the big difference. It's where it comes from. Um, but anything can be brought to select board for discussion, as you suggest, Allison. I agree. But it's it it really has to come out of the snowball budget. And we have to be convinced that the revenues are going to be there to do yeah. that. Yeah. But the bit yeah. falls, you know, if if we approve something for the snowball budget and it doesn't work out, then all of that has to be made up by taxpayers. So it's Correct. 
best to have their approval before that. Um, Can I ask a question of Jody? Yeah, go ahead, John. Yes. Jody, what are your estimates for the um, annual payments if this goes through at 500,000? Um, at 500,000 with 15 years, it's about $33,000 a year. And that'd be going this year's budget, that 33,000? No, it would, I would like to see it go into the FY22 budget if the timing is right. The only thing I have for a real problem is I, I understand and I know that select board have the, uh, the, the control of the civil budget but still you're talking about a half million dollar piece of equipment without town approval. You know what I mean? Right. I'm just, that, I have an issue with that. To me, that seems like a good town meeting item in some capacity because signing ourselves up for a $33,000 payment is at this point, it's essentially agreeing to operate the snowball at a deficit. Um, which might, it, it may be what the majority of Camden residents want us to do. Um, but I'm, it and just, the question it has never been asked. Well, and it's not going to be a $33,000 deficit if the numbers that are justifying it show that there's some payback. So back to Sophie's right. point earlier, yeah. we need to see those numbers. Right. But still, so maybe. You don't need it good argument for town meeting. I don't know. Jim, do you have something? Jim Hurst, no. Have, do I have something on the snowball? That it's, you probably don't want to know what it is. <clears throat> <laughs> your, your little square just lit up. Was that just? <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm awake. I wasn't snoozing. I, I just thought you had something to say. Well, That's all. I, but, I, but, I, but I think that when we're looking at a, uh, an operation that is barely at best a break even, were it not for the toboggan championship, it would be a, a negative number now. So to add thirty-three thousand dollars to this budget, knowing that the, that it's probably going to be, as someone suggested, a, a losing proposition, we have to somehow to convince the the taxpayers that that's okay. We're willing to live with a deficit for the next fifteen years. Or maybe it won't be a deficit, but they can hear those arguments and and decide whether it's worth it or not. Well, all we have to do, Allison, look, all we have to do is look at the current budget and we know that that's a loss if we use 33,000 against this year's budget. Right, but a, a commitment to continued good grooming and you know, there, there are a lot of other variables that- Well, that's true. And one of the other variables that doesn't get talked about too, too much and ought to be is, that, is, what, is the, what is the survivability of snowball of, of ski mountains in this neck of the woods first off and jim that, that's an excellent question uh, but I, oh we I, definitely I, talk about that oh. yeah it's, it's obviously audra and jody have already done a lot of work to um we mentioned a couple of them about who's charging the snowball and who's working in the town aspects uh the workers comp it had never been charged in the past and now part of that's being charged because we do need to do an accurate accounting of what it costs to operate the facility, whether it's plus or minus, it, it's really irrelevant. It's, you, you can bury it in general fund. If the, the taxpayers will have the problem with that, I'm sure. But if they, but you, if you don't start with what it really costs, you can't make that decision and inform the taxpayers of what they're paying for well, the facility. No, no, absolutely right, Bob. I don't disagree with you. That's right. I I can just add. Um, I, last year we had, a, I think, a 33,000 repair for a groomer in, in the budget that was not in the snowball budget. And what happens is it creates an unrealistic idea of what we're paying for the snowball. So I asked for if we're going to have equipment uh, for the snowball, it should be included some way in their budget so we can get a real good idea of what the snowball costs because of all the things we've just talked about. Correct. Well, I don't think, Bob, I don't think anybody's debating whether the snowball should pay for it. It's just the idea of going out and paying for a half million dollar piece of equipment without town meeting yeah. improvement. Yeah, well, I get but, that. But um, uh, the issue of what, where, whether we're spending whatever on the snowball, it causes it to, um, I, I, could, I could probably argue that there are some other elements that shake, the snowball should take a larger share of, but that's a qualitative argument. 
I think it's the same thing. Whether is this the item that's tripping the snowball into a significant red status? I don't think it's as simple as that. No, no, no. But the other question is, Beth had earlier had said that that we finished this year looking like with a minor red. But is that including the revenues from the uh, toboggan weekend or not? I believe Jody can answer that, but I think that, it's, that it's does all in. include it's all in. Yeah, we're yeah. we're looking to just about break even this year. I think including the fifty-two. It'll be slightly red, in my opinion. And that's just with a, the fifty-two. Yeah, that includes Tobago Nationals revenues. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And the back of the room. Whoa, whoa, what, what was that statement? Somebody said about the debt included. John, what was your question? I asked when Beth had said that the. Year finished slightly in the red. I wanted to know if that included the fifty-two thousand dollars revenue from the Tobogan weekend. Oh, yes. And, right. and we'll Thank point you. out that it's also including the fact that they ended early this year, as there's going to be a lot of unknowns. I think with just what's going on right now. So I think part of that needs to get wrapped into your conversation. Some of this you sounds like I support, I support the snowball one hundred percent. I always have. It just I had questions. That's all. Oh, no, no, I think that's fine. I think some of this is turning into a select board policy discussion rather than potentially. You, right. budget you, are, committee, you so. are correct. I don't know. No, I first, I mean, I can only speak for myself and I always seem to want to, I always seem to want to talk about things a little bit more than other people, but I really enjoy getting budget committee input on this. And sometimes the, the decision of where is the appropriate place to vote on this or that, um, is the hardest part. Um, it is very easy to kind of bury different things in different parts of the budget and, then, and say, well, the voters technically approved it because, you know, they voted for some big under, you know, bottom line number, but um, finding ways for people to vote on things and voice their opinion in a way that they actually know what they're voting on is important. And so hearing budget committee input on this kind of stuff, I, I really enjoy it. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah so I, I think, you know, having yeah. that, that budget kind of estimate we, I asked for earlier would be helpful in understanding the financial impact of that investment and where there are cost savings, um, you know, and I'm only assuming that on a half a million dollar Piece of equipment maintenance is going to be different than what we've been paying for so far for the other older equipment so all this information would be useful i think for all of us to see including the side board robin yeah. thank May you I? yes Lorna. question um i think i remember beth saying that the um new groomer would be safer um that certainly is something to learn about and understand if it reduces danger to employees there. Yes, point. It, it, it would be a winch cat groomer, which means uh, currently the, the groomer that we have cannot drive down Muscle Ridge without thinking that they're gonna go into the woods or go out of control somehow. So a winch cat allows it to be winched up the mountain slowly while it grooms. Uh, and it's a much, much safer way to do that part of the mountain. It'll clearly, because of how steep it is and the way the fall line falls. And currently we have to make a lot of snow right there in order to groom that correctly for the skier. So. Thank you. Audra, do you need anything more from us? No, um, I think that the most valuable part of uh, the budget committee hearing the snowball budget is the input that you're able to give to the select board. So yeah, if, if anybody has anything else, I think that this is a really good time for them to get that feedback. Yeah, or feel free to email us too with other, you know, if things occur to you later on. Um, I personally really like getting emails with thoughtful comments about this. So. <laughs> Audra, do we have one or two more meetings? I, I'm lost where we missed a week. I think one more, we can, we can wrap up the budget in one more meeting. Okay. 
Um, I, I think we should put some time in to the agenda for the end of the meeting to really sort of have a recap of where we are and what the impact of what we've done is on the mill rate and um, have a conversation a little bit further on what's going on currently and how that might be impacting what's going on with the budget into the future. Another thing um, would be good for all of you to talk about tonight, the provider agencies and how you'd like to handle that. Um, I know, you know all of them are willing to come and participate, um, but you know, last year, I don't think anybody wanted to really discuss it. Um, and so there was really no need for them to, to come and show up and make their pitch. So that might be something that you wanna talk about tonight as to whether or not you're gonna wanna hear provider agency presentations or not. How many, how many are there? Where is that in the budget, Audra? Oh, that you... is page 24. In which section? I'm not sure your tabs, my tabs are not numbered, so. Okay. Well, I think it's tab six. And tab we have six. Is okay, it pretty much the same as last year, Audra? It's pretty much the same as last year. Or wait, there's, I mean, there was one, um, there's only one organization that increased significantly and that was the Historical Society. But everything else is the same. I'm, I'm comfortable with what we did last year. Just saying. Um, Audra, do you think there needs to be conversation on that historical society? Why that? Why there was a request to double that? And well, um, I'm I'm happy to speak to it if you, it, I can declare a conflict of interest, so to speak. But um, Jenna and I are both on the board of the historical society, and. Um, this year is the state bicentennial, as most of us know. And um, one of the buildings, one of the only buildings to be featured from the area as part of the state bicentennial um, showcase is the Conway House. Um, the, the Historical Society has a huge, there, there are a lot of expenses associated with that, there are a number of buildings. Um, the Conway House is maintained in a, it, it's you know, an original 1790 homestead and is really the only thing like it in the area. There's a lot of desire to um, try to make it a, a, a little more presentable and lots of things are falling apart on it. Um, we have a, a much smaller endowment than a lot of organizations and it's been run really on a, a bare bones budget by um, a few really dedicated people. Elizabeth Moran, um, the former director of the library, Heather Moran, um, who works for the Maine State Archive, also used to work at the library. Um, it's, they don't get any support from Rockport. Uh, Rockport a, a few years back decided they weren't gonna support provider agencies anymore. Um, I hear a lot from people that history and preservation of that kind of thing is sort of an important community value and it seemed reasonable um, to ask for a little more help. I think my general feeling is that people would prefer the opportunity to help a little bit more rather than to see uh, the a really historic site just kind of crumble into the ground. So that's a short version. Heather Moran, who's the chair of our organization would be um, happy to come and give a, a, a much more detailed presentation, but. So the question to the budget committee where this wasn't on the agenda, um, we probably shouldn't have a conversation about this tonight is do you want to hear presentations or, um, or do a vote? next week on on this and have a little bit more discussion on that one or where what is the what would everybody like on that 
I don't think it's necessary. I'm sorry? Um, I said, I don't think it's necessary to have them all come. Okay. Do you want the historical society? I think the historical society should come if there's a discrepancy. The other ones are fine. That's my personal opinion. I, I agree with Carlo. Okay. Everybody, everybody kind of nodding heads yes on that is what I'm seeing. So Audra, can we have a, a presentation then from the Rockport Historical Camden Rockport Historical Society? Okay. Sorry. Yes, absolutely. That would, that would probably be enjoyable anyway, because a lot of people don't know about that. And so I, I know Heather would welcome the opportunity to be able to share a little bit more. I, but, but I, keep, I, I would I would Robin, I'd like to ask a, a question. Yeah, don't worry. Okay. Um, if we're not going to have the other agencies come and make a presentation, uh, is everybody everybody willing to accept their budgets now? Because if if somebody decides next week to vote something down and they haven't had a chance to make a presentation, we should know right. that ahead of time from the full budget committee. But I also don't think it's that we can vote on that where it wasn't even on the agenda this evening, can we? It's a non-agenda no, non no, item. So. Procedurally, right. procedurally, if it's not on the agenda, you shouldn't yeah. be voting on it. That's no. right. Well, why doesn't everyone uh, maybe just feel like they can come if they want to? You know, if they're worried about it, they should come. Yes, we have done that in the past, if they would like to be there, but know that we may well just vote it through. So. I mean, it's going to be pretty easy for them this time because they can just log on to the, it's not going to be a matter of having to sit in the French room. Mm -hmm. Um, point. We're going to log on to right the Zoom here. call and yep. you know, if we Good need point. them, yep. then we they, uh, they should be made aware because in the unlikely event somebody wants to increase one presenter's budget, for example, uh, yep. beyond the current amount, the other ones may be reduced. They should have the opportunity to respond to that. I think Allison's point is good. We're all sitting in our living rooms or offices at home. It's an easy thing to have them have them be there. Um, if we have questions, so and, and, I mean, and also, and, and, Jenna is trying to. Hang on, go ahead, Sorry. Allison. No, go ahead. I raised my hand. I was just going to say, uh, in addition, um, there will be um, hopefully more budget member committees here next week that are not here to discuss this today. Yeah, well, we we can't discuss it today, and and we've lost a lot of people at this point too. So, Allison, you had something more. Yeah, I think Jenna appears to be muted, and um, uh, I think she wants to say something. If the whoever's running this can, um, I'm trying to look down the list here. Of yeah, I think she, Jenna, are you there? I'm not show. I'm not showing oh. as muted on my device. Oh, okay, there you go. Now we can hear you now, Jenna. Okay, great. Um, I think that the historical society's presentation is very worth hearing and i know that heather plans to come next week uh i think that there's a lot of veracity to it and i think that anyone who has spent time and i'm also on the board so i'll i'll declare that conflict right now um but anyone who has or even has not spent time there should uh just take a walk around the campus and it really is a vital thing that has a lot of legs for our community. And I know that we doubled the garden club's budget last year. I know that they're very visible. Maybe the historical society we is didn't. less so, no, but I think it's, we, there were some, there was some interest in, in doing so. Um, and so I think it's really important that we, we talk, we hear what Heather has to say. And I know that she's prepared to present. Great. Well, I think we've already said we'll have everybody invite everybody there. And if there are questions, um, we can have them present. I would just encourage us to keep it. They're not they're not doing a department head presentation. So um, but thank you. That's you. I assume Janice can send that invitation, Audra. Right. I mean, there was some controversy last year. So the uh, looking at the baseline is just whatever was approved last year being the standard might not be the way to go but but so. I, th I think we need to table this conversation to next week uh yeah and not have pros and cons debated we've already established that it's not an agenda item that we need to discuss today so i would you know suggest that we table this item until we have the presentations thank you i agree thanks sophie 
So at this point, I think we need a motion to adjourn, correct, Audra? Yep. Yes. So moved. Second. Right. Seconded. All in favor. I won't do a roll call on that one. Hey. <laughs> All next Thursday. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank Bye. you, Robin, and everyone else. Good night. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night, everyone. Good night Bye. and good luck. Yeah. yeah. Stay safe. Yes, you too.